All right, we just did our first round of upgrades. I've had the bike for less than a week now. I've got about 300 miles on it. I took it on quite a few dirt roads the other day and it does really well. So we'll just kind of start at the back and work our way forward. I put on the Lex exhaust. I was going to go with the Q4 exhaust. It was a little bit more expensive or actually quite a bit more expensive. Uh, I don't think it was on stock at the time. And I just, uh, I like the Lex exhaust based on reviews. One thing to note, uh, there's two brackets. One is longer than the other. And that's this one right here is a longer one. So that took me a minute to figure out. But uh, when you put it on there, uh, you just have to play around with it a little bit. The It comes with two springs. Uh, one of the springs broke when I was trying to put it on. But no big deal. It's It's pretty sturdy on there right now. The stock exhaust, you can see this thing's quite a bit bigger and bulkier. It's really heavy. The heat shield's heavy. So those are no longer in the bike. Uh, the Lex exhaust seems to be a little bit more snappy. Uh, and the sound is really good and it's not too loud. You can see the snorkel I took out as well. Uh, when you guys do take it out, I found it was easiest to remove this rack uh, remove uh, the seat, of course, uh, remove the panel and use a long flathead screwdriver to pry it out. Uh, I tried needle nose at first and that was just more trouble than it's worth. Let's look at our foot pegs. These are our IMS foot pegs. Uh, so comparison for stock, the stock are a little bit longer and the IMS are quite a bit wider. Uh, vibration wise, I don't really notice any difference. You know, the stock pegs, of course, dampen more vibration, but it's not bad at all. I still have the bushings in there. I have the flex. I'm gonna give it a shot for a while. And if I don't get used to it, then I'll get that kit that will basically eliminate that problem, but it'll cause more vibration. I put on the longer shift lever. So far, it um, I don't really notice it with my work boots. I'm going to wear my motocross boots today just so I can see if I have any interference trying to shift. Uh, tank bag. I find that when I stand up, it interferes with that. So I'm probably going to use it more for like long distance rides uh, when I need more space. Not so much for day to day. I'm awaiting a top case that is on back order. I also have my test panniers right here. These are the medium sized ones. Uh, I don't have any racks to mount them to yet. I ordered them from Happy Trails and I have not received them yet. So once those come in, then I'll mount those up and I'll probably keep them on the bike most of the time. I do want the Kawasaki top case. Uh, even though it's flimsy, I have the uh, one key system already and the mounting hardware. I'm just waiting for the case to become available. Uh, the mirrors, these are those ram mount mirrors. Uh, keep in mind when you order them on Rocky Mountain, uh, they're like 65 bucks, but that's for one mirror. Uh, so times that by two, that's what both costs. So when I first ordered it, I didn't realize that only one showed up. So uh, I bought these cheapo Amazon mirrors for like 25 bucks. They were better than the stock ones but they weren't really that adjustable. Um, so these, I haven't ridden with them yet, but one great thing is if you're gonna ride in a lot of vegetation, you can just move them out of the way and not break them. And then also, you don't break the entire component. If you break one component, if you drop the bike, uh, it's a lot easier, easier to replace. I know I said I don't like bark busters uh, so much, I'm not a big fan of them, but I did put these on. Uh, the prime primary reason is because I ordered these new bars. So these are ODI uh, RC high bend bars. I put on the rocks risers. Um, the stock bars, you can see on here, it has a hole in the end. That's where this bar mount goes into. That doesn't exist on the uh, aftermarket bars. Uh, these bars are a little bit narrower, um, but they seem to work pretty good. I really like the bend on them. Initially, I was going to go with the 
uh, ATV bend, like the ATV high bend on those pro taper bars, but I had a lot of pullback on those and I knew that would be a problem standing up. So I bought these and so far they're really nice. I was a little bit worried about how high they would be, but it's not really an issue. Rocks risers and this high bend bar being 6'3 works pretty well. I have my GPS. I had that previously. I took that out of my truck. I just kind of wrapped a temporary cable around right now, waiting for my other cable to come in. Uh, so I did put in the power supply. Super easy, plug and play install. Uh, interference wise, you can see it comes really close with the Bark Busters. I had to get this little um, elbow connector in that. Seems to work right now, but I haven't ridden with it yet. The uh, mount right here, you can see I have a, a dampener in there. Uh, this is basically, I'll put the links for everything in, in the description, but this is basically for mirrors. That's what that mounts for. This is a universal, uh, I don't know you want to call it, the thing that sticks in the back. And just on this particular GPS, there's not a whole lot of surface area. So uh, I was a little concerned if, if it'd fall off, but I've hit some stuff pretty hard and it's still on there. So we'll see. Uh, I did put on the uh, risers here. It does change the angle of the windshield quite a bit. When I first saw that online, I thought that looked kind of goofy, but I actually like it. I think in person it looks pretty good. Uh, one thing to note, when I was taking my windshield off, all these were extremely loose. And I was like, huh, that was kind of weird. So when I put them back on, I just put them on hand tight. Nothing crazy, but I have a crack. So when you do that, they're on loose for a reason. So keep that in mind. Let's see, I think the final upgrade I've done so far, I put on the fork brace, this is Eagle Mike's fork brace. Um, it's very stable on the road. Off-road, I've actually bought them suspension already. Uh, and it stays nice and stable. I think difference wise, uh, it does work really well, uh, just overall. And that is a good upgrade. So that's it for right now. Let's uh, suit up and head out and see how all this stuff works. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a pretty good looking bike. I really like the color. It's something between GI Joe or uh, zombie apocalypse So I just put on my motocross gear uh, Try the boots out with the new shifter Get our mirrors adjusted that one's a lot All right, let's go riding Yeah, it feels weird being motocross gear on this thing. Yeah, so far these mirrors, better visibility than stock. And again, more adjustable. Here, we'll take a little shortcut over here. Again, this is why we have a dual sport. You can see it's about the storm today. Oh yeah, standing up is a million times better with these pegs and uh, no tank. I can do this all day, that's nice. Everything in me wants to just flash track this corner right now. But I have to remember I'm on nearly a 500 pound bike. So shift wise, uh, I had a KX450 before. It was a lot easier to shift with these boots. You really gotta kinda fit your foot under there if you have size 13 to shift. But it's, I'm sure the stock lever would be a pain in the butt with the motocross boots on. So, we are get, getting a little bit more aggressive with it than day one but I mean here it's what Friday I got the bike last Saturday so less than a week 
I rode it to work once. I rode it to the next town over. Ridden it around town a bit. I'm 168 miles right now. So still keeping it pretty tame. Uh, so the exhaust, uh, I don't know if it's running a little bit lean. I know it's a little bit of popping between taking the snorkel out and the exhaust. And I'm sitting up nearly, I don't know, probably between 3,500 and 4,000 feet of elevation. Well, a light change for me, that's good. That's one thing I remember about street bike days where you'd be waiting for the light. All right, let's try not to die here. Okay. Let's go find some trails. Oh, this is so nice to have a bike that can kind of do everything. We'll just kind of keep it easy still. Trying not to drop it on, you know, within the first week. So I don't think this bike was made for whoops, just saying. Especially you weigh as much as I do and have uh, stock suspension. But it's doable. Uh, I wonder what it's going to be like once I put those panniers on and then add a bit of weight to those. And then it's going to really change the center of gravity some. But yeah, dude, these, uh, this is so much better without a tank bag. Uh, so far, I don't really notice the uh, bushings sagging right now. Now, uh, I don't know. Like I said it's probably a combination between the stock bars that were too low. Uh, they were wider. The pullback was a little more in the pegs. But this is a massive difference. Because one of the things that really appeals to me about a bike like this is you can basically stand up, sit down, you can move positions, you can get highway pegs. You know, it's like my last street bike I had years and years ago. You're stuck in one position and that was a problem. You know, you go like 50 miles and you gotta stop and get up for a minute. This thing, if I feel like standing up, I can. So this jump's pretty fun on the KX. You hit it fifth gear pretty hard. You basically jump into the face and then jump off that. Don't think I'm going to try that in the KLR. I don't think the stock suspension's made for <laughs> made for me going through whoops. But it's pretty fun. This is so fun having a bike that you can kind of do everything. Let's try not to get too out of control here and wind up on the ground. Until I get used to what I can do with the weight of this bike. Because it feels like I can ride it pretty hard if I wanted to. I'm just cruising along still. We'll get on some of these back trails. But yeah, you can really throw this thing around if you want to even though the bike's heavy it's doable just everything in me right now wants to go faster this stuff but I gotta remember I'm on a you know dual sport bike I'm not on a motocross bike right now this is normally fifth gear stuff through here stuff too hard <laughs> yeah I think after I budget a little bit more I'm gonna upgrade that suspension just because I know myself I'm gonna ride this thing harder than I intend to but yeah if it stays sim similar to this after put those panniers on uh, this bike is gonna be so perfect so cruising the highway speeds, I was cruising the other day at like 70. Uh, I first started cruising the headwind, so I was like, this kind of sucks, you know, the buffeting, and even with this, these windshield risers was quite significant. Uh, but after I kind of got out of the headwind, uh, it's pretty nice, but it did remind me of why I don't want a bike that I cruise at 80 miles an hour on, because I said, I don't like to ride through a wind tunnel and feel beat up. You know, I just want to cruise and go exploring. No need to go fast. That is a really green truck, dude. Kind of 
Kawasaki. But yeah, after my 600 mile mark, then I really started opening this thing up and see what it can do. But uh, this exhaust combined with the fuel injection and the snorkel out, uh, it's pretty snappy. Uh, nice, nice torque. Uh, it does plenty of power for what I need it to. You know, if I want a fast bike to get out of control, it's not be on a KLR. So you can hear that. I'm not sure if it completely bottomed out there, but just that little wheelie over the bump. So these forks aren't really made for this kind of stuff when at least you're carrying this much weight. The rear shock feels pretty good. I haven't bottomed that yet. With, uh, that wasn't bottom. I think, I don't know if that's that. Um, something's making that noise down there. I wonder if it's the uh, fork brace. I'd probably dare to say that setting this bike up, it's raceable. You know, maybe you can have a KLR class in Baja, see if you can ride your KLR a thousand miles and make it. I'd do it. You know, it's pretty comfortable to, when you have to sit and, you know, conserve some energy. The bike's already geared plenty high for uh, most of that stuff. Nice day out though. It's uh, probably mid 40s. A little bit breezy. Got a storm coming in, but I'll appreciate days like this when it's you know nearly 100 degrees outside. Yeah, I don't want to find out if my suspension bottoms off that too easy. She don't even know which gear I'm in now. Probably third or fourth. I'll go down. Yeah, that hurt my wrist. Uh, yeah, I'm freaking, I got plates in that wrist, and if you guys kind of notice, I'll carry my wrist like this a little bit, and it's just because we're comfortable with the plates in it, but I didn't even hit that really that hard, because my mind's still telling me I'm on a KX, not in the KLR, and even though I'm cruising slow, I think I just hit it at an awkward angle, but yeah, that hurts, that's tingling now. That's why I ride motorcycles, right? All right, let's try not to hit this one too hard either. We'll cruise through it like an old man. Yeah, it'll probably be a little softer when I get off this trail here in a minute. It's all that, uh, I don't know what you call that. It's not, it'll turn to silt, but it's basically all that stuff the geothermal uses, real fine powder. So it's not bad right now because it's been getting some moisture out here, but you know, come summertime. The bike feels really good though. I really like standing up on it now. So I don't even have the bars really bent up that far in the risers. Normally I do. Yeah, no need to go that much faster than this, you know, because a lot of these KLR trips, you know, you're kind of out, out in the middle of nowhere, and the last thing I want to do is break down or fall down and get hurt. And that's one of the reasons I got this, you know, try not to get hurt. Famous last words. Let's see, that's not the one I'm looking for. I think it's up here a little bit more, maybe? Yeah, it's up over this little... Uh, rise. I think. I don't know, maybe that was the one I looked for. So I've done this a million times on, you know, my motorcycle. I had the motorcycle, and you know, normally I'm going so much faster. It's like I'm used to the speed. I'm going so much slower now. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for up here. Okay, let's see. This stuff can get pretty squirrely. I'm wondering how it's going to be with the, you know, 450, 460 pound bike. 
especially it's not even uh, soft yet. I mean, it's soft, but nothing like it's gonna be here after it dries up. I can imagine a bike this top heavy if I get cross rutted when stuff gets pretty bad, you're going down. So one thing I've noticed with this bike is my, uh, you know, typical motocross stand, I have one of those ones that lifts up with your foot. I was hoping that would work on this bike. This bike sits quite a bit lower, which makes sense. I mean, you really need to lower the center of gravity in this kind of stuff, uh, especially when you're putting that much fuel up that high. Yeah, went around and build a death trap, you know, something that's sitting super high off the ground and, uh, you know, especially because this thing's kind of tall, it's good for me, but a lot of people complain about the height of this bike being too tall for them. And we'll parallel these tracks for a minute and then we'll head under uh, this little bridge. So seat height wise, I want to see if it's the same as my uh, last bike because uh, there's not much room when I go under this little bridge. So I guess we'll find out if I, uh, I usually have to put my head down a little bit, but if I end up, you know, knocking myself in the head, then you'll know it's sitting up a little bit higher. I really gotta restrain myself, try to go faster here. It's like I want a flat track on these flat corners. I wanna, you know, hit these berms. I wanna hit these jumps. Gotta untrain my brain. A little wheelie right there. Here's the, the bridge we're gonna go under. So not very big. All right, moment of truth. Oh yeah, no problem. Couldn't do that in the side by side, it'd be too tall. All right, let's try not to fall right here. <laughs> this stuff's pretty soft. Kind of lug around here a little bit. Yeah, so all this stuff right here, it's white, you know. Uh, It'll turn to just straight up powder. And this little trail uh, can get pretty bad. I can see a little bit of moisture is left in it and in certain parts. But find yourself cross rutted in some of this stuff. Depends on who's been through here, but you know, a lot of people come through here and create a lot of pretty bad ruts. Oh yeah, dude, this is why I have a KLR, man. You know, if I want to do hardcore stuff, I'll go get a bike for that. But for this kind of stuff, oh yeah. I see a storm coming in over here. We definitely need some more moisture up in the mountains. Yeah, here's what I was talking about. You got all these spots that start to get rutted right now. Doesn't look too bad. But you come in there a little too hot. I think I've almost fallen one time up here. But uh, it's so nice to be able to just do the stuff that I've been wanting to do with basically a street bike. Cause this thing is pretty nice to ride on the street. I like it better than my street bikes I have. You just hear a little bit of popping from that exhaust. Uh, said I'm not sure. Just a little bit I can hear. Didn't do that with the stock, at least that I noticed. I didn't have that much time on it, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised the bike's running a little bit different. So I didn't like the desert. At first, when I was younger, but after I started working in it and riding in it, I really like it now. I, I mean, I like the woods, of course. The woods are my favorite to ride in, but the desert is so diverse. There's so much you can go see. It's so vast. And you ride through little sections like this, it look completely different than just a couple miles away. Let's see if this guy still lives back here. He's in his bus and basically just squatting out on the BLM land. And uh, he's a huge mess, of course, uh, but he started to build traps. 
I, I saw him dragging stuff, or I can't say it's him for sure, but it's kind of convenient that it was right next to his uh, little setup there, but he is dragging stuff in the road. I had saw where he had set up a few uh, big things of rocks and he kind of laid sticks over them, so if you're coming up from the other way kind of fast, you just see sticks. Uh, I should have reported him. Uh, I'm not sure, except if he's still out here or not. The, uh, let's see, whatever agency was cracking down, uh, there's quite a few squatters living out here. And then I noticed them kind of packing up and leaving, so uh, they're doing something about it. But, you know, if you want to live out in the desert, that's fine. But don't be sitting here destroying everything, you know. And that's what a lot of them do. Feel that wind. Yeah, it's kind of thing I notice about riding like this is I can really, you know, it, it feels good, it feels like I'm doing okay, and then uh, I can find myself real quick just hitting the bump and bottoming the suspension out. Even if I try to wheelie over stuff like that, uh, the rear shock will come up and then hit a lot harder. Right, I got some water in here, that's good. This will all dry out. Uh, after spring, uh, we bottomed suspension on that one. Like I said, these aren't even that big of bumps. But yeah, in the springtime, this will all start drying out and then uh, you see people going out on here. Try not to hit this corner too hot. Everything in me just wants a flat track around that stuff. And maybe I'll try it more when the, you know, I get more used to the bike and I, I can get on throttle a little bit more, but it's, it feels like I can do it pretty easy. So yeah, I'd say the more I ride this bike, the more I like it. It's like you never know until you actually get it. You know, you have your suspicions of how uh, things will work out, but it's really, really a good bike, especially for the price. I'm really, it's said hats off to those people that convinced the Kawasaki leadership that, you know, they're going to make these upgrades to the bike and still keep the price where it's at. So whoever fought that fight, you know, thank you. You know, if we go up a little bit in the future with a few upgrades, that's fine, but we don't need to have a, you know, spend a ton of money, uh, you know, to make huge upgrades. And I think a lot of people, you know, like me, right, want to buy the KLR because it's, you know, certain things that appeal to it, you know, once you start changing all that, uh, you know, just see, you know, do, do a different bike. You know, if you need to have a, a V-Twin, you know, have a different bike. You know, maybe it'll compete with KLR a little bit, but I can see why there's those KLR communities that just, you know, that's all they ride is KLRs. All right, we're getting a little closer to where this guy was living. So make sure he didn't set any more traps out for us. But yeah, I mean, he rode, rode by him for, I don't know, months and months, and then all of a sudden I just started seeing that everything, it was pretty deliberate. You know, out on the road, all within a half mile of his uh, little setup there. So if it wasn't him, then who was it? He probably doesn't like people like me just kind of cruising by. You know, I, I'm respectful when I go by, you know, but, you know, I'm not sitting here, you know, fifth gear pinned everywhere. You know, if I see him coming up, I'll slow down for him. Be careful with this cattle guard coming up. It's a uh, hit that pretty hard. I can probably ding my wheel. A little concerned about this uh, these tubes. I'm gonna probably put some heavy duty tubes in it pretty quick because you know I ride a lot of desert stuff and with all the rocks. A lot of people go shooting right here. I found a truck uh, last year right there that's pretty nice. Uh, like truck, you know, like a rancher's truck, and you could tell it had been there just overnight, and they had, somebody basically stole it, ghostwrited it or something, 
I tore it up, stole some stuff off it, so I ended up reporting that one to the sheriff, letting them know where it's at. I find a lot of abandoned vehicles, but I think only a couple times I've called the sheriff. One of them was a vehicle barely hanging over the railroad tracks on a really steep angle. So that one I called more because the uh, the risk of the car falling onto the tracks, and I don't think the railroad would be too happy. All right, so here's the guy at the bus. So he's still out here. Looks like he's expanded. Uh, this is where all the traps are set up in this little section here. Uh, to be honest, that place is a lot cleaner than it was. But whether this is, I, I can't remember if it's BLM land or land reclamation or whatever it is. But come on, dude. Like, you know, it looks better now than it was, but come on. See this other dude up here. Uh, let's see if he's there. It's like a white suburban. And he'll just. I've seen him out there a few times, like, out of his vehicle, but it's like, summer, winter, doesn't matter, he's always there. And he'll drive away sometimes, but, I mean, that's got to be, like, the most boring life in the world, to sit in your suburban, you know, 24 hours a day, 365. They just passed a dead cow that... Somebody probably taken out of there has been rotting for like the last three years. And one thing I've noticed with the GPS is the uh, the speedometer on the uh, the bike is off by about three or four miles an hour. Yeah, there's a gas suburban. You think it's abandoned, but it's not. He'll out, he'll be out there walking sometimes, but he always parks in the same spot. But I'd say at least it keeps it clean over there. But ah, what a boring way to live. Like, oh, he's always there. Uh, this is such a fun flat tracking corner. I uh, see so we're coming up on another abandoned vehicle that's been out here for, I don't know, like a year maybe. Uh, it was in pretty good condition uh, when they first left it. And then now you can see people have been tearing it up over the last year. So, but it had license plates and everything on it when I first saw it. Uh, and it was up here on the right side of the road, kind of. Uh, looks like somebody had taken a joyride and just left it, but uh, it had Nevada plates and I'm in Nevada, so it was in state. I'm wondering uh, what the owner, if the owner's the one that did it, or if they just kind of wrote it off for what they did. Who knows? So coming up here now, let's make sure there's no cars coming. Uh, the Polaris uh, and Floral Parts place, so I don't know if they just distribute West Coast, but if you order your parts, good chance they came through there. That spike is so smooth on the road right now. Inside of the corner here, I hate when bike or people on motorcycles do that, but there's nobody around and it's an easy corner, so. Yeah, for the, you, you that are wondering, this is in Fernley, Nevada, so you got a lot of stuff coming in like this, you know, a lot of distribution warehouses, uh, Tesla's just down the road, that's where a lot of uh, people work. Uh, Google, I think, is coming in there. I mean, you got a lot of uh, these businesses. I don't know what this new building is over here. They just built that. That's massive, whatever it is. This is awesome. If I want to get on the highway right now, I can. But we're on a KLR. Why would you do that? And why do I still have my blinker on? Ah, I'm just getting so used to riding on the street. Yeah, let's see if we can get through here without smacking this. So it feels pretty nice in motocross gear. I didn't really count ever really riding motocross gear in this thing. Oh, hold on, looks like this. So that thing just bind up right there. Hopefully I'll get my new, uh, what's it called in? The other cable. I'll put that up right there and see how that works. That's one thing I don't like about the bar clusters either is they just take up a, a lot of real estate. Sure 
we'll come back up here for for those of you familiar with the Fernley area. We'll come back up on this uh, the legendary motocross track, the uh, same one I used to race back in the 90s. And let's see, story I heard. I don't know how true it is. Here I'll sit down so don't get so much wind in my face. Um, is it? It was an LLC. The city liked having people out there ride. You know, it did create a lot of stuff for the economy. I heard somebody bought the land, uh, and they basically just are holding on to it so they can sell land for more. They, of course, don't want anybody riding on it. So whether that's true or not, that's what I heard. Uh, we'll get a quick look at the track when we come back here, but it's, I know a lot of people are really disappointed with it. Uh, not being able to ride there anymore because I don't know how long has that track been there like 40 years and people come from all over to ride it and then there's a new track that's back on the other side of town I heard that it's uh, I don't know how to say his name the guy you see in Supercross Hectic Nap or something like that I think it's, I heard his brother or something owns that track and it's more of a modern setup the Fernley track is basically just a big sand pit come up on these whoops up here when we go by the track that I did in fourth and fifth gear. I'm not doing that on this bike. <laughs> I'm going to absolutely find myself on the ground if I try to go faster those things. Surprise, surprise, another abandoned vehicle. This used to be a Ford Explorer before somebody set on fire. And then you have more idiots that like to just throw trash out. Half the time they're so lazy they just pull up the middle of the trail and dump all the trash out. Woo! We jumped a little bit on that one. It's pretty sick air. Got like maybe like six inches in the ground, it's crazy. Uh, another abandoned vehicle. I think that one's newer. See that out there by the power lines? That, that's where I want to go right there. All right, let's try a tight U-turn in this thing. See how that works out. <laughs> oh, without falling over. Yeah, not too bad. Nice and soft. Let's try not to drive neutral. That's not going to work too good. So yeah, these whoops I was talking about pretty fun like some fourth fifth gear you like hit this jump down you know and it's like uh just gotta be careful that you don't have anybody come the other way or the side road right here which that right there actually no what we were just riding on used to be an old railroad yeah, it's cruising through the whoops nice and slow Such fun bike to ride. All right, there's the old motocross track right there. They haven't done much to it. Uh, still see the old water truck out there. Um, the jumps are all the same. They basically, whoever has the land now hasn't even touched it. Nobody really rides out there anymore, but every once in a while, I'll see like a truck and somebody riding. And that's why we don't like squatters. Look at this. This is another area that they were just living right here. And I uh, said, whatever agency finally got them out of here, but they left all the trash behind. Old Fernley motocross track. There's I 80 right there. You go that way, you head uh, towards Reno, it's about 30 minutes away. And that's where I bought this bike, so uh, let's basically give a shout out to Kawasaki Reno. Uh, I got Jeff's name that sold me the bike. Stupid easy to buy it. Walk in there and out, no time at all. Uh, he wasn't trying to upsell anything. It was pretty clear as soon as I came in that he knew exactly that what I was looking for. But, so I got the bike for 
a good price. I'm happy with that. It's pretty seamless. Kind of loop back around here, maybe hit a different trail on the way home. See if I'm feeling brave to go on a few more things with this, but uh, I don't want to overdo it. So windshield right now, said so I'm probably what I'm doing 40-ish miles an hour, 45, uh, and maybe about a 10 to 15 mile an hour headwind. The wind is hitting me right, basically about nose level. Uh, versus about shoulder level was the stock setting on the windshield. So that's giving you some idea in me being 6'3". Uh, of course, you can feel the wind on my shoulders as well. But it would, uh, like I said, over time, uh, you'd be pretty fatigued without this. But don't buy these risers and just expect that they magically solve your problems unless you're a pretty small person. Another corner, I just want to flat track around. Uh, maybe not in that gear. <coughs> I'm making something else, who knows? Always building here. Well, knock on wood, I'm glad I haven't dropped my bike yet. We're gonna remember to turn our blinker off this time. I was doing that before I forget and actually learn how to shift the bike. So shifting's okay with the boots and this long lever, but it's not great. But I'm not expecting you know perfection either. Yeah, I'm just kind of lug up around here. Pretty sandy. See some old berm I was wearing in right there with my last motorcycle. Alright, trying to do a little wheelie over that. Woo! Yeah, something's hitting there. That's not bottoming out, whatever that, that noise is I'm hitting. At least I don't think it is. a fun corner to flat track is these uh, connexes up here uh, you basically start out in one direction and transition to the other don't think we're gonna do that today but see like right here you can really start to lay it over and just flat track around here maybe without falling over but and then you can transition back the other way it's more fun when you're coming the other way Yeah, so I'll, I'll be honest, these uh, these Ram mirrors, when I kind of saw them on some other videos, I'm like, oh, they look kind of goofy, you know? That's why I go out those other $25 mirrors. Uh, but again, like a lot of things, they look better in person. And I also like the fact that you can customize uh, how they, where they lay over. Because another problem with those other mirrors, if you want to see out of them, when you stand up, uh, they're kind of interfering with your arms. But yeah, the, uh, the, the foot pegs, uh, those bushings still, I mean, I've been riding for 
well, probably at least a half hour now and I haven't even noticed them. So there's no need for me as of right now at least to get those other uh, brackets. Just comes down to user preference. Like I said, I'm not doing anything crazy with this bike. Just kind of lug, lug that gear a little bit. That's pretty soft stuff right there though. Well, I can officially say I've done a few little wheeling over things with this now and actually uh, caught a little bit of air in that one little bump. <laughs> but I'm probably not going to do much more than that. That's a hard hit on the shock right there. That's why you have legs too. The legs make great shock absorbers. <laughs> Well, GPS hasn't fallen off yet, but for some reason uh, it's resetting power right now. Not sure why. Of cable, I came loose, or it doesn't like that much bouncing around. But pretty impressed with that mount. That thing hasn't fallen off yet. Knock on wood. All right, it gets really sandy right here. We'll go through it pretty slow. Eh, this thing's doable in this thing. All right, so should I go up this wall here on the other side or not? Ah, screw it, we'll try it. Heavy bike, no issue at all on, uh, eh, let's do second gear. No issue on motocross bike. Didn't hit that as fast as I want to, but didn't fall over, so that's good. You can see how that rut I was really, the berm that I made with my uh, KX. Uh, come back around here, kind of where we started. Yeah, that popping usually comes from when I come off throttle real fast. So let's see, let's. Let's talk about some second impressions after we got to ride it a little bit. So, again, I did a ton of research before I bought the bike. I would not say that it's exceeded expectations, it's met expectations. It's perfect for what I want to do with it. It rides smooth on the road, cruises at highway speeds that I want to cruise at. You can, I can tell you can easily cruise all day long at 75 in this thing. I wouldn't I'd probably want to cruise 80, but I kind of don't want to do that anyway. Just being in the wind tunnel that long is just not my idea of a good time. This guy had headphones in. Scared the shit out of him. <laughs> um, suspension, too soft for this kind of stuff. Absolutely too soft for this kind of stuff. But if you're not doing this kind of stuff, then you probably don't really need to upgrade your suspension. Uh, the upgrades, so far I really like everything I've done. Uh, I got some more that I'm gonna do, waiting on parts to come in. They have to get this thing broke in, I'll uh, open it up a bit more, just kind of cruise around the day still, which kind of what you want to do with this thing anyway. You can absolutely throw this bike around if you want to. People with a lot of skill can really ride this thing good if they wanted to. It's an easy bike to ride. Doesn't require a lot of skill to, uh, to ride it, you know. It's uh, very friendly. Power's real nice. Has great capability. Uh, so range-wise, talk about that. Uh, so the fuel mileage is not good so far. Uh, I burned through fuel quite quick with it, uh, but again, a break in the engine 
and from what I read, uh, it's kind of expected. But to squeeze a 300 mile range out of this tank right now, uh, it wouldn't do it, apparently. I'm basically two bars remaining off of two tanks of fuel, and I'm sitting at 292 miles. So, somebody do the math on that one. Uh, you're not getting 300 miles out of one tank. There's no way. Let's hope after brake on in the engine, uh, the fuel mileage improves. But that's one of the reasons I bought the bike too, is uh, really had great range. I've not been riding the throttle to a point where it should be burning a lot of fuel. So, only time will tell. Not a big deal. Um, but it, if things stayed that way throughout the life of the bike, that means that there are certain situations that I'd have to carry an emergency fuel reserve with me, which I don't prefer to. But not a big deal. Alright, we'll come up here and cross over. So let's see, anything else about the bike? Um, no, not really. I mean, I haven't ridden it long enough. I've been hearing about vibrations and stuff and these things. Uh, nothing really to note on that. See, GPS turned back on. So for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe that, nope, that's what it was. So this thing actually popped out. Uh, let's see. So it looks like the Bark Buster kind of pulled it out of the socket a little bit. And then it was just kind of hanging in there. Uh, let's see, other than that, uh, if you're as tall as me, I highly recommend the Rocks Risers, just the normal ones, uh, not the ATV ones, uh, which I'd considered. Uh, RC High Bend works for me. The other bars kind of sit about maybe that much wider. Uh, not really noticeable for me, especially up this kind of stuff. That's more probably stability thing. Uh, riding on off-road is nice. I can really you know, set up properly. I can really take this thing in some gnarly areas if I wanted to, but I don't plan to. On the street, a uh, little city streets like this is really nice, comfortable to go around on. I can cruise at, like I said, 75 uh, quite comfortably. You can cruise at 80, but 75 is totally fine for me. If you want to cruise fast, then you're not buying a KLR. Let's face it. I don't know how it compares to other bikes. Like the other one I wanted was a Tenere 700. Uh, I can tell you this thing is pretty freaking good off-road. So other than that, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll probably have a few more videos, upgrades, and then we'll see where we go out in the future from there. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for uh, more on the KLR.